Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK and into your homes. Welcome to my channel, and if it's the first time, I hope you like what you hear. And if you do, please share and subscribe and put the um, thumbs up button. And my existing subscribers, as usual, thank you for your support. Um, it's quite difficult now doing what I do because I really get some challenging requests. And sometimes I look at them and I think, I can't, I can't handle this. I can't really, I don't know enough about the topic. And then I think, well, you could always look into the topic. And then I think, well, you know, the people who ask me to talk about things and who value my opinion, they trust me. That's all I can say. I have some requests where there's nothing but trust. They have to trust me in order to ask me to talk about a subject. Well, the subject, um, I got an email and it was asking me to talk about the Cameroon. Not so much the war, but it had something to do with the International Cooperation Agreement, which many of you probably know about, but also about the ebony trees, which I didn't know about. And apparently the ebony trees are the um, heritage of Cameroons. And a lot of um, Taylor Swift and other people use it, um, the ebony, for their guitars and stuff. Anyway, um, they're suffering from deforestation and stuff like that. And a lot of the ebony is being taken away and they're a bit concerned. And then I started wondering whether the war was about the... Anglophone versus the Francophones, or whether it had something to do with the ebony trees. And then I, then the person sent me a copy of the International Co Cooperation Agreement. When I looked at it, I thought to myself, these people that are thinking of repatriating to Africa and have Africa as the mode of destination, do they know that it's controlled by France? And I thought to myself, Africa doesn't control anything. As big as it is, previous leaders have sold them out. And they haven't got a leg to stand on. Anyway, I'm going to read you the um I'm going to read you the agreement. It's very short, but it's very impactful. And it's so that even though um, the African co um, countries or African colonies got their independent in the 1960s. The French leaders of that time, I think it was Charles de Gaulle, got them to sign this international cooperation agreement, which would bind them forever. And, and you know, you might say, well, you know, 1957, that was when the agreement came out. Why hasn't anybody done anything about it? Apparently five people tried to change the currency that they produced. Let me step back a bit. The France gave the, from what I understand, the France gave two different types of currency to Africa. Um, the West African um, franc and the Central African franc. And if they needed any printing, it had to be done under the scrutiny of the French treasury. And... Out of all the money that was made or printed, 70% went to the French Treasury, 20% went to, towards financial liability. So the Africans were only left with 30%. If they needed to borrow, they could, they'd have to borrow at commercial interest rate. And so what's happened now is that because um, they're so obligated to France, even now, and this is because they've been sold out, basically. I mean, people have always said historically, slaves were sold out by their own people, sold, sold for beads. And this is a similar scenario where greedy politicians, myopic politicians made deals in order to cover their backs, in order so that they could live a wealthy life and sold out the country. And those people who have tried to change that currency have been assassinated or overthrown by coups. I think there's about five of them. I'll give you their names later. 
But the fact of the matter is, it's not like people aren't trying to do anything about it. But that is why there is so much turmoil in the country. And Cameroon now, they're going through, oh, they're going through some, you know, some civil war. And the Fran Fran I think France just about a week ago has sent in 1,000 troops into a certain part of the Cameroon in readiness for the Amazonia's uprising. They've already got 3,500 troops in there. So I'm thinking to myself, people are thinking about going to repatriate to Gambia and Ghana, you know, in different parts of West Africa. Do they realise that Africa's controlled by France? by the French. And are they happy with that? If they go over there knowing that and they're happy with it, then fine. But to me, I would feel uncomfortable. I would feel uncomfortable because the slightest little um, retaliation, the shit hits the fan, basically, in a nutshell. Anyway, I wrote down some notes because I didn't want to forget anything. Um, so it's called a French Cooperation and Compliance Agreement. Um, I want to read it out for you. It's really terrible. But France Afrique are policies established by Charles de Gaulle to control former colonies. France struck a deal for independence with a franc monetary system, offering a franc monetary system, which they claimed would provide stable and a robust currency for 12 African countries and 14 ex-colonies. And it would be managed and controlled by the French Treasury, legally obliged to put 50% in the French Treasury, 20% for financial liability. If they borrowed, it would be at the commercial rates. Um, the West African and Central African banks would, were provided to facilitate this. Apparently, Jacques, Jacques Chirac said, a big part of the money received in France comes from the exploitation of the African continent. Um, Algeria, Mali, Mauritania, Guinea, Niger, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Ivory Coast, and more recently the Cameroon are resource rich. Um, for their uranium, their gold, their diamonds, their iron, oil, gas and ebony. And French is invested heavily in these areas. Um, there are currently 4,500 French bases in Africa since 2014, and that's including the 1,000 recently set up in Cameroon in readiness for any insurgency from the Amazonians and elsewhere. Between 1962 and 1995, France have intervened apparently 19 times. Uh, since 2010, France has intervened in Libya, Chad, Mali, Central African Republic and Ivory Coast. So France Afrique is a political and economical patronage and military co cooperation. That is what comes under that. Um, so I was just wondering if you really would want to repatriate to a country that is bound by the 1957 cooperation agreement. Um, let me just see what else is there. 158 million people live in the CFA monetary zone. That's the Central Africa, the Central Frank. Oh, I can't remember what that stands for, but it's got something to do with that currency that they've produced the Central African franc and the West African franc. Um, in 2019, Luigi Di Maio, who was the Italian Deputy Prime Minister, accused French counterparts of manipulating the currency of the former French colonies in Africa. And he had blamed France for impoverishing Africa and encouraged migration and Europe. Africa cannot do anything about it. They'd need millions to take out a lawsuit. But I think um, the France, France is losing a bit of a hold because Chinese has now gone in there invested and so has America. So they don't have as much power as they used to, which is, thank God. I mean, re regardless of how you look at it, France isn't owned by, I mean, Africa isn't owned by African and they are, cannot do what they want to do, whether they have allegiance to France, whether they have allegiance to China or USA, they belong to someone. Africa is not African. 
the place, the country, it's just a place that's owned by non-Africans and the Africans live there. And if you want to be one of those, then that's fine. Um, leaders who have been assassinated when seeking monetary independence. 1963, President Sylvanus Olympio of Togo was assassinated three days before issuing a new currency. Others include David Dako, Thomas Sankara, Morris Imigo, Robert Mega, and a couple of others. They've either been a throne in coops or assassinated. Um, let me see what else there is. I just want to read you this article six of this corporation, which is quite disturbing. I mean, can you be imagine being in a country where you haven't got any rights at all? The government can't do anything. It's controlled by a European country. And remember with that video that was going about, um, what's her name? Dr. Arikana. She was sacked. Apparently they forced um, some something to do with the French, forced her um, out of the job because she spoke. So she spoke something about the Article 6, I believe, what I'm going to let you know. So um, let me see. The agreement is 57 years old and was signed on the 26th of December 1959 by President Ahijo and the France of President, the French President Charles de Gaulle. Up till date, neither Paul Bia nor Georges Pompidou, Valérie Giscard, de Sang, François Mitterrand, Jacques Chirac, Nicolas Sarkozy or François Hollande have changed anything. So I don't understand how an agreement that was made in 1957 that is so biased in favour of France has been allowed to continue and it hasn't been changed despite all the different precedents. I don't understand that. But they reckon that, you know, they've just found um, new leaders who will align themselves with French leaders. And so that is why it's been allowed to continue. But Article 6 of the Cooperation Agreement between France and the Cameroon reads, 1. France shall determine Cameroon's political, economic and socio-cultural orientations. Number 2. France shall manufacture money for the Cameroon, the FCFA. France shall guide the determinate. This one is for, this is for the one for the Cameroon. This, is, this isn't for the whole of Africa. Uh, France shall guide the determination of Cameroon's educational programmes at all levels. The French public treasury shall have a portfolio named operations account to cover 100% of Cameroon's foreign exchange. Note, this percentage has been revised to 65% in 1972 and 1973 in Brazzaville and Dakar for BEAC and UMOA respectively, and finally sits at 50% today. I should bloody well think so, 100%. France shall be given priority in the exploitation of Cameroon's strategic raw materials. In the event where France is not interested, Cameroon may seek other partners to exploit the raw material herself. And that's like the ebony that they're famous for, which is really expensive. On the 10th of November 1961, military assistance... Each time that the Cameroonian president is overwhelmed by an external aggression or internal rebellion, he may call on French military assistance. In the event where the Cameroonian president is unable to seek this assistance by any form of communication, the French ambassador to the Cameroon can make the request instead of the Cameroonian authorities. So... That is a Cameroon, and I think they might have similar cooperation agreements throughout Africa. Um, because when they were talking about the Central African franc, that applied to a lot of West Africa and Central African Republic. So I reckon 
This is the only one that's been unveiled, but I reckon there's a lot of cooperation agreements out there. French Cameroon achieved independence. Well, what kind of independence is that? They're not independent at all in 1960. So, um, what else? The, I just wanted to say something about the ebony trees, which also be also a bone of contention. It's a finely textured type of wood with a very smooth finish when polished. Carved pieces have been found in ancient Egyptian tombs. Modern uses are largely restricted to small items such as crucifixes and musical instrument parts. But the world has already used half, used up half of its stock of ebony. And one guitar company is trying to reverse the trend by planting thousands of new trees in Cameroon. Lafy saplings of the ebony tree, an iconic indigenous hardwood species with a jet black interior that is prized for sculptures, piano keys, furniture accents and stringed instruments and fingerboards. So, um, these trees are our heritage, Nakuli says. My parents' generation cut these trees freely and never had to worry about it but today we're re realizing that if we don't plant trees there may be nothing left for our children we are worried about the future of our ebony forest the congo basin is facing rapid de increase in deforestation cameroon is on pace to lose an area of forest the size of new jersey by 2035 according to the Centre of International Forestry Research. Forests are cleared to make way for palm oil, rubber and coca plantations, as well as for small-scale slash and burn farms. Global timber markets in Asia, the US and Europe are driving an increase in both legal and illegal logging. Meanwhile, China is helping Cameroon build a massive new deep water port that will make it easier to export trees from across the Congo Basin. I think, well, a company called Krilikam is the largest exporter of ebony from the Cameroon with a quota of 1,200 tonnes in 2016. I'm not quite sure how valuable that information is, but hopefully someone will find it quite valuable. I just think, it's very interesting how things are uncovered and we don't know what's going on. We see these countries and we see them, you know, in poverty and we see them kind of struggling. And we wonder why their GDP is so low. And then you find out that they've got no control over anything, not their resources, nothing that they grow, not even their money. They don't have no control over anything. So what is the point? And then if you retaliate, you get killed. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that bit of information. Bye-bye.